It's another sunny day here in Kilmarnock and we've got loads of books to pack. Well, about we got 11 orders, so that's all right. Um, lots of standard bundles, one or two nice wee extras, but my name's Ian and I sell books on eBay. Uh, bundles of books, that's the store, make sure you visit it. Right. Uh, as I said, we've got lots of kind of standard stacks going out today. We've got some Mark Billingham, Anne Cleaves, Terry Pratchett, John Grisham, Jeffrey Deaver, Jenny Colgan, Tom Clancy, a wee mix of Kate Ellis, Karen Slaughter and Leslie Pierce, uh, a bundle of Gerald Seymour and Mick Heron, one little PlayStation 2 game I've had sitting for donkeys and a nice wee classic. All of them have got to go out today. So I'm going to get packing and just keep chatting, if that's all right with you guys. Yeah. Really limited pickups this week. I'm kind of trying to save it all and do it all in one day, where I can do one big load. But I did sneak out yesterday, picked up about 30 books. Just usual. I grabbed my bread and butters, you know, your Lee Childs, Lisa Jules, Javery Devers, etc. So we've got a few added to the collection, um, a couple of them still to list actually, what have we got, yeah we've got another, uh, what's his name, Pilkey, you know, Captain Underpants, so we've got another of his standalone kind of graphic novel things, they're fun, I don't know how popular they are but I like them, I don't know why, they just appeal to me, never read them but the books themselves appeal, anywho, we're putting out some Jeffrey Deavers first, five Jeffrey Deaver paperbacks, the Vanished Man being one of them, so we'll get them wrapped up, and I watch a lot of YouTube, as I'm sure anyone who's watching this probably does as well, and it seems, you know, a lot, I watch a lot of different types of videos, but as we're doing eBay selling, we'll talk about that, uh, it really does feel as if the sellers you see, for the, not all, but for the most part, the sellers you see on YouTube, YouTube's their income, rather than the reselling piece. Uh, I'm sure they make a good, better income than me from eBay, but it all seems to be, you know, go out and find the, the fun, the sexy items, and talk about them, because, to be honest, that's probably what people want to watch, rather than another stack of Jeffrey Deaver books going out the door. Um, but, and fair play, you know, that's, if that's their business and that's how they're making a living and they're providing entertainment and information, then that's great. I enjoy watching them, so I'm not going to, I enjoy watching some of them, so I'm not going to knock it. But that's not why I'm here. Um, I think I was... I finally looked at what the whole monetization thing was and this is going to PR26 Preston area, don't know um, So what is it, to get monetized? I've forgotten already Is it 4,000 watched hours in the last year and a thousand subscribers so I've been doing this for five weeks or so Four weeks, five weeks, uh, and I think I'm sitting at like 50 hours of watch time and maybe 20 odd subscribers. So I'm not in it for the money, man. Uh, the whole, you know, editing videos, I don't, I don't enjoy doing that. Um, going out and doing picking videos, I'm not going to do that because that could actually jeopardise uh, my ability to pick. You know, I've got a couple of really, really good spots, it's taken a lot of trust, a lot of time for them to let me go in and do what I do there, so I'm not going to jeopardise that. I very rarely go to the car boot sales, mostly due to weather. Um, and I like to have my hands free so that I can actually get things done efficiently and effectively. So, 
that's not for me. So I don't, I've been saying like and subscribe in these things. Uh, that's because I hear everyone else doing it. But to be honest, I don't really care if you like and subscribe this. If you watch it and you get something from it, that's great. And you feel the need to click a like button, great. But the whole subscribe thing, unless you desperately want this to pop up in your uh, feed again tomorrow, the day after or whenever, then don't bother, man. There's really no need. Uh, you can all do without it. Anyway, there's another strange button appeared on my camera. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Camera, my phone. I just use my phone for everything. One shot, all the way. Anyway, packing up Terry Pratchett here. Four hard covers and a paper back. And these are going to SE10. London? Sounds Londonish, doesn't it? Um, yeah, so why do I do these videos if I'm not in it to get monetized and make my YouTube fortune? Which I don't think really exists unless you're Mr. Beast or someone. Um, um, I keep saying M. That's me pausing to think about what I'm going to talk about next. 2700 SE10. I love Terry Pratchett. Big up to the TPs. That's two days in a row. Big Pratchett going out. Right. Why do I do this? Because I work on my lonesome all day. And it can get a bit dull. So having someone to talk to whilst I work makes this wee bit of the day fly past. Uh, helps me think about what I need to do next. Helps me process things. Anyway, next book going out is Lawrence of Arabia's Seven Pillars of Wisdom. I like this book. It is from, where's the date on it? 1962. It's in really good condition for its age. Uh, love it. And this has gone for £6.95 plus postage. So, a nice wee sale. I'm going to wrap it up good. It survived 12 years longer than I have so far. So, don't want to risk it getting damaged now. Snip, snip, snip. <coughs> Yeah, um, what I found is family, i.e. teenage son, ain't interested in any of this. Obviously teenagers can read, but it seems like most of them don't read. He's not interested in books. Maybe one day, hopefully one day he will. I always feel a bit disappointed on the kids' behalfs that they don't read. Well, thinking about what they're missing out on, they'd rather sit on TikTok or whatever it is they do at the moment uh, than picking up a book and just discovering, you know, a whole new world. Want them to think differently and all the rest of it. Um, so I always feel a bit sorry for them from that point of view that they don't get to do that. But he ain't interested, so I've got no way of talking about what I'm doing during the day. Um, and that's not from any kind of vanity point of view or boastfulness or, or anything like that. It's really, if I talk about things, when I vocalise things, it helps the thought process. So when I'm doing these videos and talking through them, um, talking through the orders, it helps to focus exactly what it is. I'm achieving in a day. Uh, coffee pause. And we're back. Um, so, noticing, talking about, you know, how much things sell for rather than just looking at the list, wrapping them up and going, it's helped me realise where the value is in the sales that I get. So, a bundle of five bog standard paperbacks I make three to five pounds. It's, it's not big money. 
doing lots of them, that's great, keeps things ticking over. But like I said, the Lawrence of Arabia book that I've just packed, well, it wasn't particularly expensive. The overall order value was £10.30 compared to the Grisham books I'm doing next, which was five books and paid £12.50. Um, that £10.30 is a lot more profit per unit. So it'll cost me £3 odd to post it, two three pound in fees so i'm making like four quid on one book compared to three to five pounds on five books so it's you know little things like that have helped me focus and say right actually the more of that type of title i can pick up the better they don't sell often they don't sell fast although i've only had that one two or three weeks um but if i've got enough of these kind of quality rarer titles then they will start to sell regularly because there'll be enough of them there to allow for regular sales. And I do have quite a lot at the moment, maybe a couple of hundred, but if I had a thousand, then instead of one a day, it could be two or three a day, and that's an extra, you know, 12 quid. And some of them are worth a lot more than only 6 95 One book I did pick up yesterday, and I got so excited. I'll show you this, hold on. <coughs> BFG from 1982 ish. Uh, so I know first edition Roll Dahl can be worth a lot of money. Um, and I just I didn't I didn't open this, I scanned it first and what came up was first edition BFG uh, 500 quid and that's sold. So that's sweet. Unfortunately, although it's first edition, it's a fifth print. Um, so First published 82, and this is the 1985 fifth reprint. So that's a shame, but still, it's worth a tenner. But oh man, I'm so excited when I saw it. That's two uh, first edition, not first print, Roll Dolls I've got sitting there. Yeah, I really like finding things like that. So that was just in with the bog standard kids' books. So, you know, the um, place I popped into yesterday, they were doing three for a pound. So 33 and a third pence for a £10 book, but potentially for, you know, a several hundred pounds book. So I'm going to focus more on looking for the rarer books. Um, um, I've done it again. Not that I don't look for them anyway, but I do one kind of pick up a week where I go in and I get hundreds of books in one place. And there's usually a few older ones in with amongst that, so I'll grab them when they're there. But when I'm going into the, the wee, you know, where I'll pick up a dozen books at a time, I tend to just go into them and say, right, let's grab the the fodder, i.e. John Grisham, which I'm about to pack. Um, stop saying M. But I'm going to focus more on looking for the rarer books in those. I don't disregard them if I see them, but I don't focus in to look for them, if that makes sense. So I'm going to look harder for that type of title in those shops and see if I can pick up a few more. I have had luck in the past in a couple of shops with those older books. For example, a few weeks ago, um, um, done it again. I need to put an M counter in these videos to stop me doing it. I picked up a big bundle of sci-fi books. Frank Herbert, Patrick Tilly, Larry Niven, uh, Robert Heinlein, Ray Bradbury, uh, kind of a lot of the classics and most of them are four or five pound books. There's a couple that are worth a tenner and one that I've got listed for 120. When you see those bundles sitting there and somebody's obviously handed in a collection, it's always worth grabbing them and seeing what they're, what they're good for. You'll never lose money on them, even if it's titles that aren't actually worth much on their own. If you've got a bundle from a particular author, you'll be able to stick it together one way or another and make a couple of quid on it. If books is your thing, I suppose. So I really like those kind of titles. No, I like all books, don't get me wrong, but when you see something that's a bit of a classic and you know you can get it back out there into the world, I like that. That gives me a warm feeling. 
So that is one of the reasons I do these videos. It helps me vocalise what I'm doing, which makes it easier to see patterns in sales, to kind of get my head around the value that I'm gaining from particular sales, um, etc. Um, next up, we have Mark Billingham, a wee bundle of five of his. So we've got Time of Death, The Bones Beneath, Their Little Secret, The Killing Habit, and Cry Baby. So five paperbacks, all going out to DE11. I feel like I've had a few to DE11 in the last couple of days. Um, but it might just, well, I owned again. I've been trying really hard not to, but I might just have seen that once or twice and thought that it was common. Let's wrap these up. Without seeing M. Um, used to be a trainer in the civil service, and vocal tics were an absolute pet. He, he, he. They would drive me mad, and then you catch yourself with one, and you can't stop it. It's just right at the front of your head, all the time. and it's quite obvious what they are. You know, that vocal tick is just there because there's a gap in thought and speech, so. Instead of being comfortable with a silence, your brain knows that you are vocalising, so it continues to vocalise and throws in some familiar saying, sound, vocalisation that fills that gap and creates a step to the next one. And it really bugs me. So when I catch myself doing it, it's even more annoying. And I guess I probably do it a lot without realising. If I'm in a room with people talking, you see them begin to flinch every time you say M or uh huh or whatever it might be. But when you're just talking to a phone, you'll get that same response. So it's much harder to spot, control and not do, I find. Everyone is different. I did an open university course, oh man, decades ago. And I was up at Stirling Uni for a few days doing some, not part of the coursework, it was, um, I think, oh, I did it again, an English degree thing. God, it's gone. And there was an American lecturer, a lady, she was very good, very clever, knew what she was talking about. But she ended every sentence with, does that make sense to you? Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense to you? And I was ready to murder her. Oh, well, murder's a wee bit strong, but I really needed a pint at the end of those lectures. It was maddening. No one else seemed to notice or everyone else was able to ignore it. Oh, it just got right into my soul. Does that make sense to you? So I'm just going to wrap up these packages and cover them in bubble wrap. Does that make sense to you? And then we'll cut the bubble wrap there. Does that make sense to you? And then we're going to fold it all over. Does that make sense to you? See what I mean, man? Really nippy. Anyway. Anyway's probably another one that I've seen. wrap up these Anne Cleave books, which are going to be a six, and they paid £13.30, so that's what, £9.95 plus postage, and I'm hoping it's below two kilos, as soon as there's a hardcover in there, so it's one hardcover and four paperbacks, it just makes me a little bit, oh, is this going to go over the weight, it's a bit of a, an odd order, not an odd order, there's no such thing as an odd order, but they've got a copy of the long column paperback and they've also asked for one hardcover. So I'm hoping that's not an error on their part and they're going to turn around and go, oh, I've made the wrong order, can you send something different? Because when I have to redo postage on any parcel, 
but wipes out profit, absolutely obliterates it. One nine hundred, there we go, we're under. B six. With my faithful Sharpie. So I hope that's not the case with that one. And they've ordered what they wanted to order and they're quite happy with it. Next, we've got the wee mixed bundle of women writers, women's fiction, whatever you want to call it. It's thrillers. What have we got? We've got a Karen Slaughter, The Fallen, Kate Ellis, The Bone Garden, The Blood Pit, The Burial Circle, and Leslie Pierce, Suspects. So I managed to pick up one Leslie Pierce book yesterday, having sold nearly all of them, and it sold straight away. So she seems very popular at the moment. If you've got any Leslie's there that like you've not got listed, you know what to do. Get them out there, man. So two by two, side by side, and one across the top. There we go. That's a nice balanced parcel. Double wrap it and bag it. So where's this pile going? SP4. Where is SP4? Nobody knows except the people that live there and anybody else who just happens to know where it is. Still haven't got any sellotape. I really need to remember that today. things like that. Usually I remember it like 11 o'clock at night, but most things I'll order online, but not sell a tape. There's one little pound roll out the supermarket, lasts me a week, two weeks, so I don't really feel the need to go and spend loads of money buying a huge stack of them to save like five pence a roll. Try and remember and get some today. And I look to get the wee manny's dinner. The wee manny's bigger than me now. Um, oh, it's a damn thing again. One four hundred. Another. Is it, did I? Was it SP4 I said, didn't I? Yeah. SP4 and the other half. There we go. Right, rattling through them today, aren't we? Oh, I was, I've been reading June. You may or may not know. I'm trying to improve the quality of what I read. Again, nothing against all your mainstream, best-selling, popular authors. I do enjoy a bit of pulp now and again, but lately it's been getting a bit meh. I've started a couple of books that I usually enjoy, by offers that I usually enjoy, Simon Scarrow, Connor Golden, and I've just put them down after the first 60, 100 pages because they're not doing anything. It's just churning out the same old crap. Only it's not the same old crap because I do. I like the characters. I enjoy the stories. I like the historical elements on it, of it. But they're just not doing it for me at the moment. So I've decided to try and get something a bit different. Go to the books that I've heard are good books, you know, well-written books, and see if that improves my outlook. And so far, really, really enjoying it. So I thought the, the second part of it, book two was in it yesterday. So book one, you know, it's, it's the setup. It's always the setup, isn't it? First act, who is everybody? Where is everybody? Where is everybody at within themselves in the first piece? Um, hinting at their potential, all the rest of it. Building the world. So first, 150, 160 pages, whatever it means, is all of that character development, world building. Now, we're right into the action. Not that the first bit didn't have its moments. But uh, but uh, but uh, now it's gone down, 
and it's beginning to happen. That's really good, really enjoying it. The writing is fantastic. Yeah. There's a lot of books you read. Pulp Fiction, bestsellers, where there appears to be a quota. This book should be X number of pages long. It should have X number of words and a certain amount of padding. Always seems to be Sometimes feels like a bit of a cut and paste job rather than it being meaningful to the, the plot or to the story or to the character development or whatever it might be. But some authors don't seem to waste a word, not a single word. And so far, June has been very much in that category. Uh, beautifully written, brilliantly written, 70 years old. What feels ridiculously modern. Um, the whole nearly end there. The, one of the scenes in it I was talking about Timmy Boy yesterday because it just like fascinated me so much. Where well, the guy's using his iPhone to control a drone to try and assassinate the young Duke. And this is 70 years ago. Yet yeah, it's what we have now, it's what people run about with. It's, it's crazy that somebody was thinking of these things and writing about these things. And from the point of view of not of, oh, wouldn't it be amazing if this was the case, but, you know, these books always feel as if they're written from, we could do this. Don't know how yet, but we could do this. This is coming. So, yeah, really, really liking it. Highly recommend it so far. I might get to the end and go, I'm never reading another Frank Herbert book again. It was such a letdown, but I doubt that's going to be the case. Still not a fan of the films. It's actually, reading, reading this is actually making, well, the first film I never liked. From back in the 80s with Twin Peaks Boy and Sting. What is Sting doing in a movie, man? Um, but, the newer film... It was alright, I quite enjoyed it. But it didn't feel right when I was watching it. Does that make sense to you? But... Sorry, a lot of tape on this one. Although I enjoyed it, it was, it was empty. You know, they're just... It felt like an idea of a story, rather than a story. And the fact that the protagonist, the main protagonist in the book, is a 15 year old boy, is very relevant to how he develops and where he is and it's why everything that's going on has such an impact on him. Yeah, in the film, he ain't 15. I don't think it ever says he isn't. But he ain't 15. I mean, man, he's hooking up with Zendaya, you know what I mean? I know she plays schoolgirls in the Spider-Man movies, but it's just not. Nah. Something's not right. And they've done it in other stories. Three kilos for this one. Tom Clancy books, big bundle of them. EB22, Aberdeen area. Um, oh, I end. Game of Thrones. I can understand why they did it in that, but all the characters in that got older as soon as the programme started. None of them were their written ages. With Daenerys, I get that. Because that storyline would have been illegal, never mind anything else. That would have been a really, really tough sell for any studio to take that on. But as for the rest of it, it kind of, it threw the ages out a bit, made them all a little bit older. It certainly didn't ruin it, but it could have. And a lot of the time, 
when you've got that kind of story. The age of the characters is very relevant. So it can be a bit of a shame to ruin it like that. But I say, Game of Thrones, got away with it. Making Daenerys older meant that they could actually tell that story without it being completely abhorrent. But some of the other characters, they should have kept them as young and innocent as they were because it was much more impactful. And especially as you know, it felt as if the story took longer to tell on TV than it happened in the book. So they all aged a lot more in that time. I don't know what it's like with kids. A year in an adult's life doesn't change much. But when a 10 year old turns to 12, they're a different animal. So there's a big difference there. Anyway, getting slightly sidetracked there. We've got a wee PS2 game, Naruto, going out there. Using an old envelope to get it all packed up. 250 grams and it's going to E3. Another Londoner. I think. Put that bit of large letter, which is good. Only a couple to go. So I'm going to stop talking very soon. But we've got Mick Heron, Slow Horses, Gerald Seymour, the Crocodile Hunter, and No Mortal Thing going out. And then Jenny Colgan, Sunrise by the Sea, Where Have All the Boys Gone, and Amanda's Wedding. So that's the last two bundles I've got to pack up and do. I'm not going to hold you back any longer to see those. But I am going to finish packing up, get them off to the post office, bring you a couple of these shops this afternoon, just be local places. I'll see if I can find anything interesting and save all my pennies for my Monday pickup where I can go and get hopefully a good few hundred books all in one fell swoop. So that's today, read June, sell books, read even more books, and have fun. Right, see y'all later. Love you.